everyone, it's Mimsy from MimsyandCompany.com. Um, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make um, a bench seat cover or a dining room chair cover or any kind of chair cover for that matter. Similar to this one that I've got right here. Um, I just finished this one up a few minutes ago. <clears throat> and like I said, this is a bench, but you could use this same technique for a dining room chair as well. So let's get started. Okay, so step one in the bench recovery tutorial is to tear off the old um, fabric from the bench, the original bench seat, which I've actually already done that. And actually, before you even tear off, you've got to take it apart. So here's the base of the bench. And as you can see, there's four screws in here. And all it is are these four screws that hold the top onto the bench. So I just unscrewed these, took the seat off of the bench, flip it over, and you just pull out all the staples and the fabric and the welt and everything that goes around the edge. And then this is what you end up with, just some foam with a little bit of um, batting or Dacron over the foam. So there it is. And as you can see here on the bottom, your foam is almost always cut just a little bit larger than your platform, your wood platform. That's just the way it is on all um, chairs. So that's the first thing you do. You got to tear everything off so you end up with a nice clean slate. If your bench seat didn't have any welt or cording, you could possibly just go over the fabric that's there. This, this bench had a real fat cording right here, so I had to take it off because you can't go over the cording or you'll have a big lump there. So that's the first part. Step number two in this process is to cut your fabric to the proper size and make your welt. And I have a welt tutorial on my blog already, so I'm not going to go over the step-by-step -step how to on how to make the welt because I already have this on my blog, but um, this is step number three. So step number two is you want to measure the seat corner to corner. And this one is 16 by 18. So I'm going to cut my top square 17 by 19, one inch bigger, so that I can accommodate for about a half inch of welt all the way around, or half inch seam really. So I've already got that done. I've cut my fabric to the proper size. And this fabric, I don't know if you can see it, but this fabric has a pattern on it. And I want my herringbone or my um, pattern to run front to back on the bench. So you want to keep that in mind when you're cutting your fabric is you want to cut it so that your pattern is facing the correct direction. And if you have um, pattern matching to do on the front of your bench from the top down to the front, you want to keep that in mind when you're cutting your fabric also. So I've got my top piece cut. The second part is to cut your box piece, which is this uh, dimension here. So this is a two inch box. So I'm gonna cut mine to four inches because I wanna have an inch up here or you know a half inch up here for the seam and then I wanna have plenty to be able to wrap around the bottom to staple. I don't wanna have to be really, I wanna be able to get around the bottom nice, nice and easily. So I cut my box four inches. And so the next step is to go ahead and attach the welt to the top piece and then attach the box. So I'll take it to the sewing machine and show you how I do that. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. I've got my top piece, which is cut to 18 by 19, one inch bigger than my, my seat cushion. And I've got my welt, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to the square. So if you're just starting out, you may want to go ahead and pin this on, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch it. And I need my scissors for the corners. And when you get to the corner, you put a, a snip or a notch in there about half an inch from the corner so that you can make a nice clean square turn at your corner.
end, you're just gonna cut it. <laughs> so that it lines up. And then overlap it, fold that edge down. So you've got a clean edge and join that together. And then just sew over that join. There you have it. See how the clipped corners, you can go around the corner because of that clip. Okay, so the welt is sewn on. Now we need to attach the four inch boxing around the edges. And I've got it pinned on mostly around the whole thing. I'm just gonna finish up the last few inches here. And of course you um, pin it on right side to right side with your welt in the middle, like so. See that? So that when it's pinned together, turn it right side out and that's how it'll look. So we pin that and I pin this because I don't have a walking foot and I don't want my layers to shift. And then I start where I have a seam. And I'll check my corners and make sure that I've got a nice tight um, corner and that my fabric is right up against my um, welt and sewn tight in there. You can see on this corner, I didn't get a good tight corner here when I went around the edge. It's loose, or not loose, but you can see that. So I need to go back in and tighten up that corner. Okay, so here we are back at the table and I've got my um, cushion cover all sewn with the welt in there. I'm gonna go ahead and just press it um, because it's quite wrinkled and even though when you go ahead and staple this onto your seat, you're gonna pull it pretty tight and the wrinkles will pretty much come out. I'm just gonna go ahead and press it just so that it's perfect when I get it on there. Um, and then before I staple this cover to the actual cushion, 
I'm gonna give this a new layer of Dacron because um, if, over years it starts to get pressed down or compressed and I want it to be nice and fresh and, and fluffy. So I'm gonna add a new layer of Dacron to this before I put the cover on. Okay, so here's my new piece of Dacron. I just have this leftover from another, another job. So I don't have a, a big enough piece to go around all four edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it exactly to the width of the box and then I'm just gonna go around the two ends to fluff it up a little bit. Dacron is also known as batting. Um, you can use quilters batting, use the high loft quilters batting. This is a little bit, I think a little bit more dense, the upholstery Dacron like this, a little more dense than quilters batting, but quilters batting will work just fine too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stapled on. Dacron will really dull your scissors, so it's best off to trim it up before you do this so that you don't have to be cutting it a lot because it dulls your scissors fast. Okay, so now we're ready to put this on. And I think I'm probably gonna stuff the corners with a little extra of this Dacron because I want it to be nice and square in the corners. So I'll stuff that in and then I'll probably have to uh, adjust it once I get this onto my cushion. Let's see if that'll stay. So I'm going to get it pretty evenly um, on here. And then you want to put one staple. This corner needs a little more fluff. And then you want to put one staple on each side. And you can do a kind of a temporary staple where you hold your staple gun halfway so that your staple doesn't go in flat all the way in case you need to take it back out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now you can just go around and you want to make sure that when you're stapling on your cover that you get this welt line fairly straight when you're stapling because you don't want your welt to be all curvy and wavy like this once you get the staples on. You want this welt line to be quite straight and you want the distance between this welt and the welt that's going to go here eventually to be the same distance. So when you're stapling just keep that in mind. Some, some upholsters will actually use a ruler and measure to make sure that they're getting the same, same distance. I just pretty much eyeball it and staple. So just make sure you get that line nice and straight as you're stapling. Need more staples. So now the last thing is to put the um, welt around the bottom edge. 
see how this one has the welt around this edge and this edge. So we got to put the bottom welt on now. And I've already got that made. So I'm going to go ahead and start it on the same back. This will be the back side. And since this is where I have the, uh, the welt joining together here, I'll do the same on the bottom. So we just staple that on and I just hold it and I just feel with my finger um, that it's that it's out enough because you don't want to have it in too far and then you won't see it when you put it on. So you've got to have it out enough that you're going to be able to see it when you attach it back to the frame. course you're going to open up one side of the welt, take out some of the cording, fold that end in, join them together, And staple it. That's all there is to it. Now, normally I would go ahead and put a cardboard strip on here that, a cardboard strip on here, and I'll show you that keeps the welt in place so that it doesn't roll back and forth like this. You see how it can easily lift up. So we would put a piece of cardboard there, I'll show you. Piece of this cardboard, you staple that right on the underside. See how I stapled it? right against the underside there that keeps the welt completely tight on there so it doesn't roll up compared to this where it lifts right up however on this piece it's really not necessary because the frame comes right to the edge here and so that that wood frame of the bench holds that piece there so i really don't need to do that on this piece i'll show you Okay, so position that <clears throat> back on your cushion, and that screw is right in place. And there you have it. And see how that frame is right up against there? So that holds that right nice and tight to the, to the it doesn't roll over. On, on a dining room chair, a lot of times it'll roll down, and so you want to put that little piece of strip of uh, cardboard there to hold that nice and tight. So there it is. There's the second bench of my set. So if you have any questions, message me. It's Mimsy at MimsyandCompany.com. Um, you can check out this whole tutorial on my website, and um, just type in. Um, I'll put a link in the. I'll put a link in the notes here. So thanks for watching. Um, see you next time. Bye bye.